Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Are you serious? The rise of the Antichrist. It's not like I'm looking forward to that or anything, but I just want to say that we are dealing in the time we're in. Have you ever seen anything like it? I mean, we've we've went through, we've witnessed, we've watched an ever-changing society. Things that were so simple in the past have now become so difficult today. And we're all waiting on permission for almost everything now. What? And um, they used to say the only thing you, you got, look, death and taxes you can't avoid. But it's, it's beyond that now. It seems like you can't do anything without getting somebody's permission. And it's inconsistent message being sent across all of the states as different governors and different uh, political affiliations are in charge. All of this confusion is part of the delusion of the rise of the Antichrist. And in this broadcast, we're going to talk about it. Don't you dare go anywhere. Whoops, I just told you not to do it. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Aliens, AI technology, and the Antichrist. These three categories need to be explained. We're having a powerful webinar at my website, July 17th and 18th. Get your ticket now. It's time to answer some of the unexplained questions that have boggled the minds and the deception. Hollywood has confused so many, but we will answer them all. Get prepared in these last days. All right, all right. Now let's take a look at the rise of the Antichrist. Is not, you know, I think... Growing up, you know, everybody thought just one day the Antichrist would just walk out and flip a switch and this would be this new world order. Not really, not at all. Actually, it's a process that has been going on for centuries. As Lucifer, since the moment Christ rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, and the proclamation was that he would return, this same Jesus that you see going away is coming again in like manner. Uh, Listen. Lucifer has been working triple time. He knows his time is short. He's been fighting all of the way to prevent the return of Jesus Christ. See, the rise of the Antichrist is one thing. The fall is also coming. But in the process, we on earth and the church have to understand that the ever-evolving deception that Lucifer is going to do in his approach to try to stop the coming of Jesus Christ. One of the first things he did was try to stop the rebirth of Israel as a nation. And he knew this was going to happen. And he saw the prophecies of Ezekiel 37 in the Valley of Dry Bones. He can read, obviously, the prophetic words of Zechariah that the, the, at the end times that the Bible says that the world will come and will actually come right in and worship the Lord on the holy mountain. Matter of fact, we'll just take a peek at that right now and just go over to the book of Zechariah for a second. And here's what the Bible says. In Zechariah chapter 12, it says, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I... I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut into pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. So there's going to be a day when Jerusalem goes to shaking, literally from the anticipation of the convergence of the three religions of the apocalypse, and that's Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And that's already happening. And I've been in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, when it was also Ramadan, and there would be Christians there everywhere walking around. You had Jews that were praying at the, uh, at the wall, uh, the Western Wall, and you had Muslims converging on busloads from all over who were coming to the 
uh, Temple Mount to go up to pray at the al Ask Mosque or the Dome of the Rock. And so th this convergence is already going on. Jerusalem is already that burdensome stone. Part of that is because in May 14, 1948, Israel became a nation fulfilling biblical prophecy when they asked Jesus the question back in Acts chapter 1 when they said, have you come now to restore the nation of Israel? And he said, that's not for you to know the time or the season that's in my Father's power, but you're going to receive power after you uh, receive the, uh, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. So this, this is an important part, folks, of the coming of Jesus Christ is the rebirth of Israel as a nation. So think about Jews being scattered, being shoved around everywhere, all over the earth. The early church, they were shoved out of Jerusalem. They went and they pre Paul had to go and preach in all types of different locations throughout Turkey and Asia Minor and Greece. And, and he went into Athens at Mars Hill and said, ye men of Athens, I do perceive that you're too superstitious for you worship the unknown God. How he would stand in the temples of uh, Tyrannius and argue for two years that there was only one way to receive peace on earth. It's through a man named Jesus Christ, the Messiah and the Savior of the world, how he had solved the light on the road to Damascus and how that Christ had spoke personally to him and had commissioned him to preach the word, how he was shipwrecked and beaten, stoned three times, left for dead and whipped on a whipping post five times with 39 lashes, imprisoned and finally beheaded in Rome. This is a man who understood understood his, his, his destiny was to take the gospel to the world. And so did the disciples. Now I said all that to say this, you say, what's that going to do with Israel? The whole time he's preaching, he's telling them Christ is going to come back. And that first of all, he's coming back to Jerusalem, back to the same place he left. But it, when he comes, Jerusalem will be a nation where all nations are flowing in too. Now I can prove it to you again in the book of Zechariah if you go to verse chapter 13, verse 1. The Bible said, In that day there shall be a fountain opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanliness. All right, praise God. It shall come to pass in that day, the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols of the land and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and unclean spirits to pass out of the land. And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy when his father and mother that begat him shall say unto him, thou shalt not live for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord and his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed. Every one of his vision when he had prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. He's saying that there are come a day when all the false prophecies, the, the, uh, the idol worshipers, the pagan worshipers who fought against Jesus Christ, Christ will be put out of the land and the gospel will be allowed to be free, that Christ and that the nation of Israel be established. And matter of fact, go to Zechariah 14. Look what it says here in the word. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. His feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof to the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. Half of the mountain shall be removed to the north and half of it to the south. If you read on down, in other words, that's not happened. We've not had an earthquake to separate the Mount of Olives, to split it. That's not happened yet. So it will happen when Jerusalem is fully established and the whole world's coming against Jerusalem. It is the Lord who will stand on the Mount of Olives, split it in half, and prove that he is in control. 
And you can read on more and more. We can take you to Revelation. We can prove that to you. But I want to talk about the rise of this Antichrist. Because how does he rise? Well, he rises in the midst of a nation of Israel. So he tried to stop Israel from becoming a nation. Hitler was sent on the scene 1938, just 10 years before he knew time was running out. He possessed a man by the name of Hitler. I call him the forerunner of the Antichrist. He himself an Antichrist. Neo-Nazism, a hater of Jews and Christians. He rose up among a nation of people and slaughtered over 6 million Jews and 7 million Christians by teaching a doctrine of deceit and demonic activity, preaching that he was going to create an Aryan race, a superhuman race. This was already tried once before in Genesis 6 when the fallen angels looked upon the daughters of men, saw they were fair, t- took them wives as they chose, and they conceived to them giants, Huge men of renown, mighty men, full of violence in the land. This is why God said that he had to destroy the earth. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage as things were going on like normal, except there were violence and the earth was filled with violence. And all of this was taking place. So this same thing's going on now. You have to get Israel first established as a nation, and then you have to have this convergence of a beast kingdom, a new world order, if you will, led by the son of perdition, the Antichrist himself. And let me read to you what it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The Bible says, Now we beseech ye, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, nor, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by the letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. I want to stop right there for a minute. In other words, I don't, what Paul is saying to the church of Thessalonia, do not be afraid. I am not giving you the spirit of fear. Do not be shaken in mind or be troubled, neither in the spirit or by the word or by the letter that I'm writing to you. (coughs) Are you serious? What is he saying is this. Don't be afraid of the end times. Don't be shaken by the the rise of the beast kingdom. Understand this is part of the process. It's going to happen. Uh, And the Bible said, let no man deceive you by any means. Verse 3, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalted himself above all that's called God or that is worshiped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. The arrogancy of the Antichrist himself. The great swelling words having men in admiration. The liar, the deceiver, the worker of iniquity, the hater of the Jews and the Christians the persecutor of Jerusalem who hates the church, hates the gospel, hates religious programming, hates prayer, hates the Bible in school, hates prayer in school, hates the Ten Commandments on the wall of the courthouse, hates the Ten Commandments on the courthouse square, hates life, chooses death, perverts Everything good that God made. That is the Antichrist spirit that's been seeping into the land like a cesspool of sludge. And we have been wading around in it to our knees. And it's a time that the church of Jesus Christ stop being afraid of the spirit of the Antichrist, but preach and proclaim to him the fact that he might rise, but believe me, he shall fall. I'll show you when I come back in a minute. So get a Bible, get ready, Isaiah chapter 14, and we will show you in Revelation the rise of the Antichrist and his tricks he'll play on the people. I'll be right back. Aliens, AI technology, and the Antichrist. These three categories need to be explained. 
We're having a powerful webinar at my website, July 17th and 18th. Get your ticket now. It's time to answer some of the unexplained questions that have boggled the minds and the deception. Hollywood has confused so many, but we will answer them all. Get prepared in these last days. All right, folks, all right. Now, we're talking about the rise of the Antichrist, and basically, he doesn't just rise on his own. This entire uh, spirit of this Antichrist kingdom, which is just exactly what it is, it's an Antichrist. It's against the church. It's against the body of Christ, no doubt about it. And it hates Israel. And because that's Israel and Jerusalem, the Holy Land, is, of course, God's prophetic timepiece, and that's where uh, Christ will return. And so Lucifer's been fighting this. He tried to wipe them out. That failed and during the days of Hitler. Uh, and when there were 600,000 Jews, it ended up, after it was all said and done, crawling out of the concentration camps like a valley of dry bones in Ezekiel 37, 600,000 of them moving to the Holy Land to be a part of this new nation called Israel. Thank you, Harry Truman, for naming it that. And the thing is, uh, it was 600,000 men that left out of Egypt when Moses delivered them out of Egypt to go form the Holy Land. Isn't this something? So here we go now, go to Isaiah 14, because the son of perdition, Lucifer himself, prophesies he's going to rise. And here's what he says in verse 12. Uh, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Five eyes of Lucifer. Five lies of Lucifer his constant proclamation that he will exalt himself above the throne of God. But I love what the prophet Isaiah says in verse 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit, and they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? that open not the house of his prisoners. Listen, folks, this is the lying deception of Lucifer. He's constantly proclaiming that he will conquer the world. Remember even what Adolf Hitler said? He said that Nazi Germany said, I will build a kingdom that will last a thousand years. I wonder where he got that. That the Bible talks about Jesus Christ, when he returns, he will establish a kingdom on earth that will last a thousand years, a millennial reign, where the wolf will lie down with the lamb, uh, where there, the, okay, so, and all the things that are promised in the word of God, and that all nations will come to Jerusalem to worship, and we can read that in the book of Zechariah again if we want to, how that they're even going to rebuild the temple. And they will come there to worship the Lord. So understand something. And they will worship the Lord in the temple, and they will also keep the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to read it to you for you. It's in Zechariah 14. Go with me to verse 16. I'll never forget this. Uh, A couple years ago, I was preaching at the Christian Center in South Bend, Indiana, on a Sunday morning, uh, where Dr. Lester Sumrall uh, founded that mighty church there. And as I was getting ready to go up to preach... The choir, I mean, the music, the the praise and worship singers were singing that great song, These Are the Days of Elijah, Uh, okay? The the coming of the Lord, rebuilding the temple of praise, they were singing. These are the days of Elijah, and they were singing it. And as they came to that part, rebuilding the temple of praise, I had an open vision as I was standing there, getting ready to go, I had the Bible in my hand, I'm getting ready to go up there right after the song, and I seen the temple of praise. I seen in Jerusalem people going into the temple, and they were praising, and they were worshiping the Lord, and they were praising the Lord. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, this is what's going to happen, but remember, the Antichrist will also come to hijack it. 
Folks, let me just tell you something. Every church that's ever been built was built for the glory of God, yet every one of them, Satan has tried to tear it down, and in cases has even succeeded. People have given up. But for the most part, the Bible says, Jesus said these words, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. In other words, there might be, we, you, you will never overcome us. We are the God's children. We are the bride of Christ. We are the children of the king. And uh, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So the Antichrist will rise. But look what it says in verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even unto them shall be no rain. So <laughs> during that period of time, I mean, people are going to be coming to worship the king of kings and the Lord of lords where in Jerusalem, and they will go into the temple of praise. They will go and worship the Lord. But now the Antichrist is going to try to stop that. He wants to prohibit the second coming of Christ. So let's go back to 2 Thessalonians 2 and the rise of the Antichrist. The Bible says in verse 4 and verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. The Antichrist will reveal himself. I've been asked this question more than any other question. Pastor Begley, do you know who the Antichrist is? The answer is no. The second question, do you know how much time we got left? The answer is no. Pastor Begley, do you kind of got an idea what it could be? I could, but the answer is no. The answer is revealed when he, when you see the third temple built, folks, when you see it being built and you begin to realize that Jesus' words that when the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet shall stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Uh, when the temple is built, people are going to go to Jerusalem by the multiple millions. Right now, when, I, when I'm in Jerusalem, I talk to some of the different uh, leaders there, and, and I've been into the Knesset and met with the politicians, and they say that they've been getting about 4 million visitors a year to Jerusalem, 4 million a year, okay? It's a country of 7 million, 4 million visitors a year in an, a place the size of Rhode Island. Get this. They anticipate that once the third temple's built, that the tourism will shoot up to 50 million people a year. That's why they're building uh, restaurants and hotels as fast as they can build them. This is why the Trump peace plan is being worked on feverishly. This is why the other nations around are all getting involved with their economics, whether it be the UAE from Dubai, they want to be involved in it. Saudi Arabia, the Saudi crown prince is willing to fund a ton of it. Uh, Egypt wants a piece of it. Jordan's going to get in on it. Uh, Kuwait wants in on it. Bahrain wants in on it. Algeria wants in on it. Everybody's involved. This is why it's a covenant with many, because the economic fallout will be incredible for not only Jewish people, but the Palestinians as well. They will make a ton of money. They're going to even turn the Gaza Strip into what they call the Vegas Strip. There will be a brand new airport south of Gaza. Egypt will, will run that. A highway will run from Gaza City to Ramallah. That's going to be built by the Chinese. This is all in the works, and the infrastructure is being built right now. And I've been there enough times the last 10 years to see it with my own eyes every time I go and talk to the people there. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. They're going to build it. The question is, when does the Antichrist occupy it? When does he take it over? And he does at some point. He comes in and he takes it over. He stands in front of the worshipers of God and declares that he is God. And he's called the son of perdition. Now, the only time anybody's called the son of perdition in the Bible was Judas Iscariot when he betrayed Jesus Christ and took the sop and dipped it in, in the bread into the sop. And, and Jesus said, uh, whatever you're going to do, go do it quickly. And the Bible said, and Satan entered into him, and he went out and betrayed the Son of God for 30 pieces of silver. And he was called the son of perdition by Jesus. The only other son of perdition is the rise of the Antichrist. He will arrive. You cannot stop his arrival. 
but it is not anything to fear. But to understand that that's why you're seeing the pieces of a new world order, a globalism, super socialistic society being formed all around the world. It's not just here, it's everywhere. It's the building blocks to a kingdom of darkness that's on the way. But don't be afraid of it. Don't you dare. I double dog dare you. Don't you dare be afraid. Trust in the word of God. This is that. I'll be right back in just a moment. Aliens, AI technology, and the Antichrist. These three categories need to be explained. We're having a powerful webinar at my website, July 17th and 18th. Get your ticket now. It's time to answer some of the unexplained questions that have boggled the minds and the deception. Hollywood has confused so many, but we will answer them all. Get prepared in these last days. All right, folks, all right, I've got to read here. Look what it says. Remember ye not, verse 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until be he be taken out of the way. Once the Holy Spirit is re re released and removed to be revealed, Satan can reveal himself at that moment. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and line wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This is the hour, it's known as the hour of great temptation that's coming upon the earth where people have allowed this Luciferian uh, spirit of the rise of the Antichrist to draw them in and to trust Lucifer over God's word. That's the sin. The sin is, uh, it, look, nobody's gonna be comfortable during that time. When he starts that, Christians especially, the world won't know. They're just going to, you know, they're, they're just going to be blind leaders of the blind. Christians, though, who start to see it building, that's us now. And we're starting to see it build now. Now, how long that takes, I don't know. But trust me, trust me, it's coming. But we're not to have the spirit of fear. For the Lord said, I'd give, I do not give you the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Remember, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And we are conquerors, more than conquerors through Christ that strengthens. Can I pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus? I want to repent of my sins and get saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I'm asking you, Jesus, to forgive me and cleanse me and, and wash away the sin in my life and set me free because I believe in Jesus Christ and I receive him as my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go to my website right now. Find out other information I have there. Also, listen to me very closely. Next week, we're going to talk about, this was the rise of the Antichrist, but next week, I like this. It's the fall of the Antichrist. See you next week. God bless.